G'day guys, Dizzy Dave coming at you once again from Down Under for another book review. I'm taking a look at a book that arrived to me from Book Depository this week. It's been out since I think last November, but it finally got down to a price on Book Depository that I was happy to spend on it and had to order it straight away. I am of course talking about Marvel's epic collection, Star Wars The Original Marvel Years. Now I am a sucker for two things when it comes to Marvel comics, that's the Star Wars comics and the epic collection. And when Star Wars comics meet the epic collection, it's just awesome. Now if you look behind me, you can't really see it on the shelf, this is only some of them. I've got a whole collection of the epic collections. As you can see, I'm mainly collecting the main Marvel titles, but I will get the occasional Star Wars one if it does pique my interest. I have been buying, however, all of Marvel's most recent Star Wars comics here. They've been releasing these every few months. They've, they've usually got about six or seven comics in there. This is really been my first venture into the expanded universe of Star Wars. When I was younger, I was never really interested in the expanded universe, but once Disney bought out Star Wars and they rebooted the expanded universe from scratch, and well, I thought, well, maybe I'll sort of dip my toes into it a little bit and see if I like it. Because there's not a huge amount of material now, there's certainly not as much as there was previously. You know, 40 years of expanded universe material, I never knew where to start, so I wasn't really that interested. But, you know, a couple years worth of material is really easy to tackle and I've just been absolutely loving the new Marvel Star Wars comics. So now when I saw this one go up, the original Marvel years, it piqued my interest because as I said, I absolutely love the old 60s, 70s Marvel comics and I'm loving the new Star Wars comics and I absolutely love Star Wars and I thought, well, this would be a nice addition to my epic collection and my Star Wars comic collection, but it's also a nice piece of history for just any Star Wars collection. I've got a selection of Star Wars books up there. I'm always after like special edition, like historic books, making of memorabilia kind of stuff. So this one really, really piqued my interest. Now Marvel had the comic book right to Star Wars for almost 10 years, from 1977 to 1986. In that time they published 114 issues of the Star Wars comic. Now those issues spanned from Star Wars A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi and a bunch of stuff afterwards. Now what they actually did is that the first few issues of the Star Wars comic were A New Hope. And then every week after that they published a comic and up until The Empire Strikes Back came out and then they did an Empire Strikes Back adaptation. So everything that happened in the comics in the three years leading up to the movies sort of gave people at that time a little bit of expanded universe every week. And everyone was able to keep up with the events of Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia between films. So this comic series was the first ongoing thing that really bridged the gaps between the movies. And then of course between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi there were a bunch of issues sort of filling in that timeline as well. Now of course after 1986 Marvel lost the rights to printing Star Wars comics and that went to Dark Horse well up until Disney bought out, well firstly Marvel and then bought out Lucasfilm and then sort of went well let's blend them back together here you go Marvel you can have the Star Wars license back and as I said they have been absolutely kicking it out of the park with their Star Wars license. I'm absolutely loving the current Marvel Star Wars comics and I'm interested in getting into this as well. I was really interested to grab this and sort of check it out and have it in my collection. They actually published these in three huge hardcover volumes, the entire 114 issue series, but these are cheaper, more affordable and space effective as well and look, I love the epic collection and the way they are printed, I'll show you up close in a minute, really mimics the way the old comics would have been printed too. Same sort of paper stock, same size it's, it's really nice to just sort of have it in this format. Now as I said, the hardcover volumes, there were three volumes, because there's only 23 issues in here, plus some bonus stuff, the hardcover volumes actually house more issues per unit, so it's going to take probably maybe five or six volumes of this epic collection to complete that set, but in the end it's still going to be cheaper and you can you can pace yourself over time. So anyway, well, let's just take a brief look inside this, let's check out some of the older Star Wars comic stuff, I actually haven't delved into this and read anything yet, but I love the artwork in the old Marvel comics and this Star Wars stuff is no exception. So let's just take a very brief look inside this if you're interested in the book, if you're interested in buying it, if you just want to maybe compare between this and the uh, older hardcover volumes, well, let's take a look. Okay, here we have the Star Wars Original Marvel Years Epic Collection. Absolutely love the artwork they've used on the cover of this. I just, I adore this old Marvel comic 60s, 70s artwork. 
On the back here, we've got some more great artwork, a little, a little description on exactly what's in this. And of course, once again, this includes Star Wars issues 1 to 23, and material from Pizzazz 1 to 16, and Star Wars Weekly UK number 60. Again, this is volume 1, and we've got a little Disney logo down here, of course. Disney's got to put their little mark on there. In case you're wondering, this is what the spine looks like. Star Wars logo, and then original Star Wars Years volume 1 right here. As I said, I've only got one other Star Wars uh, epic collection, which is the Infinities. I was really interested in this because this includes a couple of great series, which are like alternate takes on the original trilogy, as well as including this great Star Wars comic series, which was based on George Lucas's original draft script of A New Hope. So I had to have this just for the sake of having something really unique in the collection again. Uh, the reason I'm showing that is just so you can see how the spines on these two will stack up. Of course, there's tons and tons of Star Wars Epic collections by now, so they'll all line up quite nice on the shelf. Okay, so let's crack this open. I'm going to do a little uh, comparison, actually, between the old stuff and the new stuff. I like how the covers there sort of complement each other. The this is the first volume of the Marvel's recent series of Star Wars comics. So I'm going to do a little comparison as we go along. So let's open this up. This is telling you about all the different Star Wars Epic Collections that are available at the moment. And we've got this great table of contents of all the issues and what's in here. So let's go from the beginning. This is Marvel's very first Star Wars comic, which is their adaptation of A New Hope, published on 1st of July. 1977. So instantly you can see the artwork is very different from anything that we'd be uh, we'd be used to today. This includes deleted scenes that weren't didn't actually make it into the movie because when Marvel were originally uh, writing these comic books, all they were given were the film scripts and a few stills and they sort of just had to make it up as they went along. So it's almost a little bit of a different adaptation of the film too, which is great. I'll just quickly skip through it all. A New Hope, etc, etc. Then you get on to some of the Expanded Universe stuff, which is sort of the adventures of the main characters between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. Of course, none of this is canon anymore. I'm not sure if any of stuff like this, I mean, this is weird. I don't know if any stuff like this was even considered canon in the first place. But there you go, Biggs Darklighter makes a return. Didn't he die in A New Hope? Yeah, well, that's a bit odd. The stock that are used on these are great, nice and thick. They're not shiny. This is printed on a stock that is supposed to replicate the stock that these comics originally would have been uh, printed on. So, for example, let's find a nice page. Something like that. Whereas today's comics would be on this glossier stock. And as you notice with today's comics, they're a lot less busy than the older stuff as well. There you go. There's not a lot of dialogue in the newer stuff, whereas the older stuff, it's just dialogue heavy, text heavy, and there's so messy pictures everywhere. Whereas this, it's more sort of simplistic, more based on action and everything. It is hard to sort of go from reading something like this into reading something like this if you've never dabbled into old comics, but it's a whole lot of fun and I really love the storytelling in these old comics. And this is a really great volume and I will certainly, certainly, certainly be collecting the entire series of this, all the volumes, however many they end up doing. As I said, it's probably going to be about five or six. But there you go. It's the Star Wars Epic Collection, original Marvel years. You'll notice it's got this Legends banner down the bottom. That's the banner that they're giving to all the Star Wars books from the old expanded universe that are being reprinted just sort of to denote that they're not part of the current canon and they are therefore Legends. Giving these the titles Legends really gives the reader the opportunity to go was this a true story or is this just folklore? That's my take on that anyway. Star Wars Original Marvel Years Epic Collection Volume 1. It's brilliant. Absolutely love it. So there it is. This is available right now. The second volume is coming out in a few months, I believe. It's available for pre-order at the moment. But I picked this up on Book Depository quite cheap. $35 Australian. Probably about the equivalent of maybe £17 or maybe about $27, $28 US. Free shipping worldwide, of course, through Book Depository. Best place. Absolutely love it. So there you go. You can pick this up right now. It's awesome. Get a hold of it. And if you're interested, check out some of the newer Star Wars comics from Marvel as well because they are really Really, really really cool I absolutely love them highly recommended from me okay guys well thank you for watching another one of my videos if you are brand new to the channel this is the first video you have stumbled across and you like me to see please after the jump hit subscribe give me a little support to all my regular viewers thank you once again for watching as always very much appreciated and to absolutely everybody out there thank you again for watching I hope I'll see you again soon but until next time take care and I hope you have a marvelous day